Today I'm gonna show you a popular technique in malware development called thread hijacking. The logic is quite simple. We're gonna jump in, throw away existing code, put our stuff inside and completely take over control over victim's PC. It's gonna be super fun. But first of course you need to know what threads and processes are. And for those of you who already know that, skip to this part. You may think of a process as an instance of an app. When you open a web browser, you are basically starting a new process. And each process has its own space in memory and its own resources like files and data. Now within a process, you can have multiple threads and threads are like workers. They help process do different tasks simultaneously. For example, in the previously mentioned web browser, one thread might be responsible for loading web pages while another thread handles user input. Now each thread has its context and it is basically a snapshot of all registers in a CPU for that specific thread. Here you can see a part of a context structure. It's a screenshot from Microsoft documentation. You will have a link in the description. If a thread is in a suspended state, we can use getThreadContext function to retrieve the context structure. We can modify it as we please and write it back to the thread with setContext function. And with all that knowledge, we can finally move to the technique itself. We will use the two functions mentioned before to modify one of the registers to be specific RIP, which is instruction pointer register. It just points to the location in memory of the next instruction to be executed. So to summarize the idea, first we get a process, a specified process that we want. Then we get a handle to a thread inside this process. Then we inject a shellcode to the memory, our malicious shellcode. And lastly, we perform the thread hijacking itself. Before we go further and before I show you the code, just keep in mind that uh, this is uh, this malware. So use it only for educational purposes. Don't do anything illegal. And also, uh, yeah, be aware that it might break your system. So with that in mind, uh, let's get back to the video. Okay, so let's start checking out the code. The first function that we call is get process. It takes process name uh, as an input and will output a process ID and handle to a process for us. Let's read uh, the content of get process function. Uh, by the way, this code is in the description. There will be a link to my GitHub repository where are all the codes from my project. So definitely go check it out. Now, first thing, we, uh, we initialize a proc structure. This uh, process entry 32 uh, structure, it's, uh, it's a member of uh, tlhelp32.h library. As you can see in this command, this library provides functions and data structures for enumerating, enumerating and manipulating processes. So that's exactly what we need. And we are initializing this structure with .dw uh, size member uh, of a value uh, with a value size of process entry. So this is the uh, size of a structure itself. Now, we get a snapshot with create tool help 32 snapshot function. Uh, a snapshot is a static view of the system at the time of the uh, at the time the function is called, including information about running processes, threads, and models, etc. With this snapshot, we can call process 32 first function, which is a member, also a member of tlhelp32.h. It takes two parameters, one input, one in and out, a handle to a snapshot returned from previous call to create tool help 32 snapshots. So basically uh, at this thing and a pointer to uh, process entry 32 structure. So uh, once we get that, and get the information about first process and count encountered in the snapshot, we will be looping through uh, the next processes until the next process exists. So as you can see, while next process uh, in the snapshot exists, check if its name is equal to specified as an argument to the function. Because uh, yeah, we specified a name of a target process. So uh, this check uh, happens like this. First we, uh, first we get a size of the executable file. So for example, uh, as the exe file, if we were to run a notepad, if we run a notepad, 
there will be a process created called the notepad.exe. So we are getting the notepad.exe size, size of this name. We save it to the DW size variable. Then we ensure that all the uh, names are lowercase. So instead of notepad.exe with a capital N, as it usually is, we turn it to notepad.exe with a lowercase n. And lastly, we perform the comparison itself. And if it succeeds, we get we save the uh, process ID and we get the handle to, to the process. Uh, right. So this uh, and this process ID and the handle will be uh, accessible through uh, those uh, those variables those variables in main function. Okay. Now. Uh, next thing is to get remote thread handle. We pass here uh, we pass here DW process ID, the, the thing that we just got, DW thread ID, uh, and thread handle will be the products. So let's check this out. Get remote thread handle function works very similar. We also first initialize a structure, but this time it's thread entry, not process entry, thread entry. We also get a snapshot uh, of a system. Uh, same command as, as before, uh, but with different parameters. So his, here we are th32cs snap thread parameter, and here we are using snap process. So bear in mind, uh, keep in mind that you need to uh, swap it. Okay, uh, logic, then the logic is the same. We get the information about the first thread and then we comp and then we search for a thread uh, that belongs to our process. So you can see that there is a member of, uh, of uh, thread entry32 function called th32 owner process ID. Uh, so if this is equals to our process ID, we save the thread ID and open a handle to, to the thread itself. Okay, so that's uh, that's it for the get remote thread and we uh, will be able to access uh, both of those here. So as you can see, there's a D word and the handle DW thread ID and H thread. Now, two functions uh, left, inject shellcode. We take handle to a process, a shellcode, which is a um, interpreter reverse TCP shellcode, if I recall. I, I will show you how to generate it in a second. Uh, size of the shellcode and the P address, which will be uh, which will be an address of this shellcode in memory. As you remember, uh, I told you that we will specify our own address uh, to the to the RIP register while performing thread hijacking. So that's why we need uh, why we need the pointer to that's why we need the pointer to uh, to our shellcode, right? Okay, so inject shellcode. So my previous videos, uh, you probably are very familiar familiar with shellcode injection itself, uh, but let me go through it one more time. So first function virtual alloc ex. Uh, we specify a handle as a first parameter. We specify a handle to a process. We take it from uh, the function, we input it to the function. While we call it, second parameter, we pass null here. We let the function determine where exactly to allocate the memory, uh, but within a target process, of course. Uh, next thing is the size of our shellcode. Then we mem commit and mem reserve, which is basically, which basically means that uh, this is the allocation type which basically means that first we are reserving the memory and then we are uh, actually we are actually allocating uh, we are actually allocating it right so pretty straightforward mem reserve reserves memory and mem commit actually allocates it uh, right okay and page read write as the uh, last parameter where is it uh, page read write uh, right, it basically means that we'll be able to both read and write uh, from this, uh, yeah, read and write from this. Okay, uh, next function is write process memory, so let me look it up here. 
write process memory. Okay, again, we uh, pass a handle to a process, a base address, which is the address that we just got, the output of virtual alloc ex. Then we, uh, then we pass a buffer or our shell code, p shell code, a size of a buffer or this buffer, which is uh, a size of a shell code, and the uh, last parameter is LP number of bytes written. And if it fails, we will get uh, we will get an error. Okay, so. Now, uh, you might be thinking, what is this display error message function? What does it do? Uh, this is something that I copy paste almost all the time to my projects, wherever I need uh, some debugging in place, because it basically transforms the error code that we will we would normally get from get last error function. It transforms it to, to text message. So instead of error one, two, three, four, five, you will uh, get uh, error and the text, the description of this error, sort of. Or maybe its name, not the description, but its name. So it's uh, way easier to uh, debug thanks to this function. Okay, so uh, last function, last function in inject shellco function is uh, virtual protect ex. So let me look it up here. Okay, virtual protect ex. Changes the protection of a region of committed pages in the virtual address space of specific processes. Again, handle to a process, the address, size of a shellcode, right? Uh, new protect, execute read write, remember, before it was only read write, now we change it to execute read write, and the uh, the address of uh, the pointer to uh, to a variable that receives the previous access protection. Uh, both S number of bytes written and DW old protection were declared uh, here at the, be at the beginning. And the last function is hijack thread. As you can see, it takes handle to a thread and the, uh, the pointer to the address, to the pointer to that other shellcode. Okay. Uh, as you can see, we are getting the we are initializing the uh, thread context, uh, the context structure, the one that you saw uh, before, uh, and we are initializing it with context slug member uh, equals to context all. Now, as I just remember, to make any changes to the context, we need to suspend the thread, and we are doing this with suspend thread function. We pass a handle to this thread as the one and only argument. We get we get thread context with uh, we get thread context with uh, get thread context function and uh, uh, retrieve it to uh, the thread context uh, structure we modify the rip which is the instruction pointer register uh, so that it equals to the address of our shellcode in memory and then we uh, set the modified uh, context to our back to our thread. If everything succeeds, we resume the thread and call wait for single object so that it can execute. Now let me show you how to get this shellcode and what's most important, let me show you this code in action. Okay, so for this uh, for this to work, you need to have a Metasploit framework installed. It comes by default with Kali Linux, so. Make sure if you are using Kali Linux, you can. Oops, what happened? It's laggy. If you are using Kali Linux, you don't need to do anything, and you are if you are using any other distribution, just make sure to install it. Uh, now, MSF Venom, and here's our command: architecture x64 payload Windows x64 interpreter reverse TCP L host, which is the IP of uh, attackers machine L port. A port that you will catch your reverse shell in. Uh, exit func thread and that uh, dash fc, which is the our language that we code in. Press enter. You need to wait a few seconds and it will generate the shell code. Oh, as you can see, here it is. Yeah. Uh, so you just copy paste it uh, to your code. Now, once you have this. Fire up MSF console 
and let's set up uh, let's set up the handler. Let's set up the handler uh, so that we can so that we can listen for incoming connections. Let me just zoom in so that you can see. Okay, I think it's big enough. So we'll use multi handler. Multi handler options. First, we need to set payload. Payload to uh, Windows X64 interpreter reverse TCP, like this. Hit options, as you can see, we have this one more option called exit func. Set exit func to uh, set exit func to thread. Exit func to thread. Now set l host to 192.168.0130. I think I'm right. Clear options one more time. Everything seems fine. Cool. So let's hit run. And let me do one more thing. Let me turn off the defender because uh, it will pick up the. Uh, it will pick up the. Uh, the interpreter payload in our code, so we need to turn it off. Okay, and now let's uh, fire up. Let's check actually what process we're running. Process hacker. Uh, process hacker. Okay, we have multiple things to choose from. Uh, let's go with. Uh, uh, we can actually go with uh, explorer.exe because why not? It will probably crush everything, but uh, yeah, I already specified it here. Sure, so let's hit run. As you can see, it perf it uh, it ran without any errors. And if you go back to interpret to, to Kali Linux, you can see that interpreter session one opened. So type shell and who am I? We are M. Jan, which is Michał Jankowski, which is me. So here's a proof that it works. And, and now you have remote connection to, uh, to your victim, so we can do whatever you want. You just own him. Pretty cool, isn't it? And that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment and a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, also leave a comment and tell me what can I do better. But anyway, see you soon.